Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I just want to talk today about some baby steps to starting homesteading. Um, this is one of the meals that definitely helped save us on our budget in order to give us uh, more room to be homesteading and doing more homesteading-like activities when we were just getting started. We started homesteading roughly in 2018 in our small house. Um, we had one-tenth of an acre and it was a semi-attached house. Um, so our backyard was fully fenced, um, but our neighbors were right on the other side of that fence. So making homemade pizza um, saved us a fortune. We are the type of people who like to eat pizza once a week and is often like our easy takeout meal, but is also really easy to make at home. So today I'm making the KitchenAid um, pizza recipe. This comes in the manual, but you can find it really easily online as well. I'll try to drop a link in the description below. Um, so yeah, it's, it's really easy. Let's get started. Okay, so the recipe calls for one packet of yeast. I have um, some quick rise yeast here that I purchased in a bottle. It's much more affordable that way. And on the side, it's gonna tell me that two and a quarter teaspoons equals one packet of yeast. So we're gonna add that to our KitchenAid. So there's our yeast. We're gonna go ahead and add the full amount of water at this time. So it's one cup of warm water. And the book states that warm water is between 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, this was something that I really struggled with when I first started cooking um, or baking. I, my mom and my grandmother really go by feel. Um, so when someone finally told me what the actual temperature was supposed to be for warm water, for yeast, to get the bread to rise properly, it was a game changer. Real life, there's dishes. Dishes happen. So we have our meat thermometer here, it's digital, which is very helpful. All right, 98.2, so we're gonna go ahead and get our cup of water. Close enough. Add that to our KitchenAid. So this is quick rise yeast and it does not require you to wait for the yeast to start activating. If you were using a traditional yeast, you would wait 10 minutes. We're also gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of salt. two teaspoons of olive oil. I have avocado oil today. That's just fine. A light neutral oil like that is fine. Give that a little mix and we'll start adding our flour. So we're going to start adding a half a cup at a time, or in half a cup increments, and we're going to add two and a half cups of flour. Chris likes a thinner crust and I find using less flour makes the dough more stretchy um, and allows me to roll it out to that thinner crust. All right, we'll get that going. So the dough's a bit clumpy right now, starting to come together.
we're gonna let that go for another two minutes. All right, so our dough is now well mixed and knead it for about two minutes. This is what it looks like. It could be a little bit more kneaded, but I think it'll be just fine. It's pretty cold here today. It's about minus 10 Celsius. So I'm gonna stick this in the oven with a dishcloth um, with the light on to rise for approximately an hour. And I'll catch you back here when we start topping some pizzas. All right, so our dough's been rising for an hour and it's about doubled. I'm just gonna lightly flour the counter here and start rolling them out. We are working with half the kitchen today. Our first bit of our kitchen renovation has been completed. We now have new cabinetry. Um, we'll have new floors here in a week or so. And then um, we also are getting new countertops. And because they are a stone, um, they come and laser measure them. And then it takes two weeks until they install them. I'm gonna be with these temporary counters for a while. I still have my old rolling kitchen island here, which is what I'm using today. But with those temporary countertops, I was able to get my sink and my dishwasher hooked up again. It would be very, very difficult to go without a sink for at least two more weeks. So I put some cornmeal here in the cast iron pan and I'm just gonna add in the dough here. Our oven is also preheating to 450 degrees. So that is one done. Mm. to this pan and the remainder of our dough. Can't wait for that new island. I'm gonna have so much more room. <laughs> Won't feel so crowded when I'm rolling out these pizzas. All right, so pizza dough number two, my fork. I'm just gonna go ahead and pierce the dough um, so that we don't get those big bubbles. Lots of piercing. And we're all done with our flour now, so we'll get that set aside, get us some more space. So I forget often that this is a East Coast Canadian thing, but we're also making garlic fingers. I bought some garlic spread at the store. Um, this was from before the pantry challenge started. And I'm just gonna slather this on the pizza dough, top it with mozzarella cheese, bake it. And from our demo day, I have some extra doner sauce left over from the pizza that we purchased. Um, so that'll be really good. That's an extra treat that we don't normally have. So much better than garlic bread in my opinion. Definitely um, one of those things that I really miss often when I'm traveling. They travel for any extensive period of time outside of the East Coast. It's always the thing that I want the most. And of course I never have access to a kitchen. You can also make your home, own homemade garlic spread, which I do do. I use Jill Winger's recipe from the Prairie Homestead to make a garlic butter 
and then I just use that in place of the garlic spread. It's pretty much the same thing. So when I run out of this, that's what I'll do. But for now, I get the easy out. I buy this for convenience. It's also pretty affordable. This was less than $3. It was $2.58. found a cutting board. All right, so this is how I make this meal a little bit more of a homestead meal. These is our homemade canned pizza sauce, and this is from our garden this year in 2023. It's pretty liquidy. This was my first round, my second round of pizza sauce, um, and I should have cooked it down a bit more, but just Add a whole bunch and still tastes like pizza. So now I know I just need a thicker texture when I'm actually cooking it. Sometimes I expect things to finish thickening up in the water bath canner and that's just not how it goes. Oh no. Oh. I've got some peppers left. I've got one that's not moldy here so I'm gonna Wash this up good and we'll use that on our pizza. These ones are going to go in the compost. Alright, so that pepper did not meet my inspection. So I've got some salami left over from a salami trio that I bought at Costco. That's going to go on our pizza. We've also got all of that on our pizza. I'll also find an onion and uh, maybe some candied jalapenos or cowboy candy, um, cause that's good on a pizza too. My little baby onions. Well, I didn't grow these, but I did buy them locally. All of the Nova Scotia onions this year are extremely small. processor to take care of the cheese for me. I know that's somewhere in the other room. I'll be right back. All right, I found the food processor. I use the food processor um, because I have breathing issues and anything like that that's a repetitive task just wears out my energy, so I'm gonna use that to help me. I buy the cheese in a brick because it's more affordable. It's one of those things that I can save money on and buy more seats. That's not good. See if that gets us enough. my favorite thing but get a vegetable wish on this pizza. Chris really likes it. And when you put enough cheese you can't really taste it. Okay. 
All right, then we've got our candied jalapenos. I'm just gonna put a couple of those on there. And that's another jar empty. So we'll bake these for 25-ish minutes at 450 degrees once that oven preheats. And that'll be dinner for tonight. Another delicious meal on the homestead. I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you like this content, please like and subscribe.